Hi guys, this is Michael from the Board Games Chronicle. Today I am bringing to you Commands and Colors Ancients, but in a special way. Today we'll be playing GMT's uh, car driven game solo system, so CDG uh, solo system. <laughs> the first version of the solo system was published yeah, a couple of months ago, and we have a couple of very good titles already covered by this Paths of Glory. Ancient Samurai Battles, Washington War, Caesar, and also for the people. There will be also the second part. What I'm planning to do today is to demonstrate to you how this game plays when both sides yeah, are running the, the, the uh, CDG solo system. Important note to say before I will show you the mechanics and describe the concept that this is by no means a bot. That means that it will not tell you exactly what to do, but it will tell you what choices do you have and you need to make the final choice. How it will work? We'll have, first of all, the die, a special die, which you will be rolling every turn. Here it is. And you have six options to draw from. On a special card for the ancients, uh, the version of the system, we have the result of this die roll and what we can do. We'll be drawing cards and using them from those simulated hands. This hand is for the this side and this hand is for the side. Persians and Greeks. So we have now like five sp uh, spaces here. Two of them are as per default uh, visible, three of them not. When we'll be rolling a die, the instruction will tell us Uncover, for example, D and choose from D, A and B. Or maybe uh, choose the lowest order count. Or maybe uh, simply uh, reshuffle the cards. There will be various situations uh, which, which we will have here. All in all, we should have from one to maximum, of course, three, four cards to choose from. And we will be making the choice which can be done on the map. And usually, if you have two free cards or one, two cards, you can always make the optimal choice. So that's how the bot plays. A couple of other things which are worth mentioning is that if you have a hand side difference, you are adding additional cards to the slots, A, A, D, A, B, D. So as you can see, this is a slot differenti differentiation. If you have unplayable results, there is a special way to deal with this. Also, for the card modifications, lower order count means the card with the lowest order count currently. So if you have, for example, order four units left and you have only two units on left, that means this is two. <coughs> Leadership cards <coughs> exactly work the same way. There are some special instructions for the some, some of the scenarios. All in all, this system allows you to play all ancient scenarios. As I said, just need some, some input from you, which is the best card in particular moment to use by the particular side. I played a lot of Ancient Solo and I always had a problem how to get those cards to choose from. And this system, this system really solves this, this, this problem. Okay, uh, that's a brief introduction to the system. <laughs> Let's talk the scenario I will be playing. I decided for one of my favorite scenarios, so Plataea, 479 BC. So the battle between the Persians and the Greeks. I'm actually using two types of the blocks. To the right, uh, these are the Spartans. To the left, these are the Athenians, as you can see. I prefer it like this. And for those who do not know this battle, or maybe would like a uh, short reminder, this was a decisive clash in the second Greek or Persian war. I will remind you that 10 years before this, 11 years actually before this, there was a clash in the marathon and between uh, the forces of, of Persians and, 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 and uh, Athenians, only Athenians, which was won by the Athenians. And now, 10 years later, the son of Darius, Xerxes, again attacked the Greece. First of all, there will be the battles at Thermopylae. Uh, there is a very nice scenario uh, using CC Ancients for this. Then we have, of course, a uh, battle of Salamis. We had also this decisive land battle at Plataea. This was like 30,000 Greeks 
and these were both Spartans and Athenians finally united. Not not an easy thing and not such a common thing. And then they crushed the Persians. Would it happen here too? We shall see. From the special scenario uh, instructions, we have five cards each. So both sides have five cards. Uh, that means that there is no difference in the cards. So so as you can see, uh, this, this, this shows that everybody has access to similar number of cards. Maximum hand size is here for all those cards, uh, which says you can use number of troops up to your command. That will be for it. Uh, other than that, uh, if we look at the map, we can see that we have a special units here for the Spartans, so five block Spartan units. We have also Immortals here, so these are the units which are equipped with bows and they can fire uh, at the range of three. Here we have reinforcements from the Persian side which can be moved here or here, and here we have some of the Athenians which were laid to the battle. Other than that, I think we have a pretty clear situation, and this is this is kind of a setup which is pretty um, confrontational. Sorry for pronunciation. Uh, it's not so far away between both sides, and as you can see, one double time can immediately allow them to close one on another. So that's what what actually happened, and we shall see if it will also happen in in our case. Uh, I will not be uh, explaining in all the details the CC ancient rules. This is not the material uh, which was envisioned with this in mind. You can check other my articles on the blog or other materials on the on the YouTube channel which tells about about this. Of course, I will be referring to how many die each side rolls. But uh, other than that, uh, yeah, it will not be very 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 detailed explanations. Of, of how the game plays. The scenario says that the Persian army moves first. So what we do, we roll this die. We got ABC and let me just for the beginning show it slightly closer to you. ABC, if not already, face up, flip all face down cards in A, B and C play card A, B or C for any allowable purpose, fill in the played card slot from the draw deck face down. It was a good roll, I think, for Persians, because we have line command here. Let us see what is here. Order medium, also a good card, because with order medium, they could reposition some of these. Yes, we'll play order medium as Persians. And what will happen? We order that amount, so five units. This will be that unit for sure, which will join the leader. This would be the second unit, which we would like to move. One, two, three, to get into the fray. Uh, the third and fourth would be those two, and we'll probably not move those guys. So those two units will be attacking here, pretty obvious target. Let me take die, two times to die. Nothing, two green, and nothing. So that was not successful. Now at the end of the turn, we put it to the discards, and we take one more card face down. Now it's uh, the Greek turn. We roll a die. We roll A, B, C also, as you can see. So they can have A, B, or C card used. This is inspired left. So they potentially can move here, or they can have some units in the uh, center or on the right. It's good to close on those constantly attacking units. On the other hand, it's also good to try to get those far standing units here. So, after the careful considerations, I will move those guys. This leader and four adjacent uh, linked hexes. One, two, three, four. Those guys go here. Those guys go here. Those guys go here. Those guys go here. 
h1 let me put them that way will be easier to move and those guys go here as we use this card it goes to the discard pile and we draw another one let us draw now for the persians they have cde cde are those three cards which we haven't seen yeah we put them face up c rally d order light e inspired center leadership it was good that we moved this guy and it seems like a good option to actually activate him i am looking if i have better options here yeah there are also good options from the order light so we will play this card order light as persians and we'll be attacking those those one those those two those those and those so five times we'll be firing at our opponents first of all this uh, the, those guys those should be light cavalry not light bow cavalry sorry for bringing wrong wrong uh, uh, wrong uh, blocks they will fire here with two yes there is a green so there is a first blood <clears throat> Let me put the casualties aside. Actually, always collect them in one place. Now, those guys can roll here. Blue. So, pretty good rolling on the Persian side. And those guys have a range of three. So, we also target the blue guy. No, not this time. Okay. So first two casualties here. Now we have foes and foes. That will be firing against the leader. Definitely good target. Yes, and this is a hit. Because it's a hit, we roll a leader check. Nothing happened. And now we have those guys. Let me roll at those blue here. Nothing. We'll ignore the flag. So this card was used. So it goes to the discard pile, and we will add one here. <clears throat> so the Persians are slowly getting advantage, thanks to the range fire. Let's see what happens next. The Greeks. Okay, we rolled this. Let me come to you with the details of this roll, because this is not so self-explanatory. Uh, this is here. Face up tactic card or lowest face up order count card. Uh, tactic cards are the cards like Clash of Shields, uh, you know, uh, First Strike, um, uh, Mounted Charge, uh, or alternatively the card with the lowest number of units which will be, you know, activated. And if there, is, there are no two cards, at least two cards uh, up, we would need to flip them. So at this moment in time, we have those two cards for the Greeks. Actually, I think I must miss the colors of those markers. Do not change anything, but just to keep it in sync. So we have three here and three here, so we can use uh, whatever we want. I think, I believe that we need to move forward. And we need to move, uh, yeah as much as possible i will use three units in center because we don't have almost anybody in the center and those guys move here and those guys move here they will be firing here on the other hand here we will have another fire from those bowmen <clears throat> now those bowmen will fire at those blue units medium infantry it's not a hit and they have one roll against the leader of course the usual suspect nothing okay <clears throat> now we add the card because we use this slot and now we roll for the persian we roll a b so we look at those two a or b mm, we have two options we have a line command and uh, which could be pretty cool uh, but not in Ancients. In Ancients you cannot activate uh, the, uh, the, the mounted units. Still, I think uh, 
I will use this uh, this line command in order to activate those units. One, two, three, mm -hmm. four, maybe this two. Let's see. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Those are okay. And uh, I will not move, I will fire. That, that, and that will be firing at this guy, and those guys will be firing at this blue guy. That's huge. Let's see. A hit. Those here. Nothing. Those here. Nothing. And those here. Nothing. So, something is still better than nothing. Nice play on the Persian side. We add a card here. You see how nicely that limits your choices and what is visible in any particular situation. Also, as a, mm, in this case, as a person, you can't predict what the Greeks will do because you might uncover something which is completely different from what you can see here, like three on the left. Really cool mechanics. Okay, important role, see? So let me show it to you also, <clears throat> a close up on this specific die roll result. So this is here. What does it say? C or lowest face up ops card. If not already face up, flip the card in slot C. So we'll be flipping this here. And now, either we use this or lowest number card, which is only here. So one of those two will be using. And these are not, this is not bad card for us because it activates blue units and we want a blue unit to move forward. We have plenty of them and they will move forward. Yeah, this turn. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we need to decide which ones will be moving. I believe we have a couple of options of attack. None of them is perfect, so for sure those two guys has to move forward. This I like because yeah, we maybe we maybe will get some better card. Let me just take it. Here, <clears throat> are we okay to move forward? Here, yes, we are. We'll move that way, but that actually breaks our line, so I don't like this. Unfortunately, we'll ever have to move that way. Exactly. No attacks for now. It's really difficult for, for, for the Greeks. Usually, it was much more easier, especially if we have a double time. What the Persians will do? They again roll C, so they either do the C or the lowest number count. So the lowest number is here because it activates two and that card inspired central leadership can activate five units so either we use C no no reason to do it there is nobody to rally or we use this so we will use that card no choice in this situation so two units on the left <clears throat> and what it will be oh it's a very good question I would move those guys here and then attack, for example, with those here. So four die against the hoplite, two hits, and then the hoplite rolls back with two die. That's one hit, second hit, one flag can be ignored, the other cannot be ignored. So, okay, situation like this. A bloody struggle. Mm -hmm. And with all for the Persian turn, we are adding the card here. Now we move again to the Greeks. It's very important what they will get now because they would love to get B, but would they get it? Not necessarily. So C or the lowest number. C is order heavy, which is completely useless card. But C says 
play card C or the lowest order count card face up. So we can play this, and this is exactly what we're gonna do. And we play those three units, of course. Now the question is, how do we play them with a with a bit of risk? I think we can get nice result here. How the risk will would would look like? First attack here, four die, and two hits, and that was the plan. Battle back, which has the leader advantage. Three hits. Good that those Spartans are so big and sturdy. Now, the leader attacks here. The crawl, but successful. The immortals are dead. First unit of immortals is annihilated. And the first victory point goes to Sparta. I have also separate victory point markers here. Yeah, yeah. So they go here, the momentum advance. Let me remove those poor fellas. And what we will do now, we'll attack versus the uh, cavalry. But cavalry will, of course, do evade. So four die here, and they most probably evade. It was a good choice because they would lose two units. I evade here on the two section tile. Let me just put it here so you better you can better see this. I love to mark the victory points on the table. It's so thematic. It shows you where the struggle was, uh, where the hits were inflicted. Sometimes I have a situation that, that on one area we would have like three, four, five tokens. Yeah, so this is this is really cool. Now to finish the turn, we'll attack with those guys here. Those cannot uh, uh, ignore flag. As you can see, at the first it was seemingly you know the Persians who are decimating Greeks, Spartans actually. Now the Spartans are decimating, but from the numbers perspective, you can see that there are a lot more Persians still who can fight. Attack from here to here. Yep, and they are dead. Second mortal unit dead. Second point for uh, for uh, Spartans. Uh, we play to five, uh, so now we are almost half halfway through. Mm. We'll roll for the Persians. Uh, before this, the Greeks need to add a card here. But the options are getting more and more limited. Uh, what would be good now for the Persians? Rally, unfortunately not. This would be pretty cool card. But let's see if they will get access to this. A, B, no. But they have opportunity to check here and here. Good. So these are not bad cards. Absolutely not bad cards. Let me see what you can do. So we have two cards to choose from. I am Spartacus and leadership and sections will take I am Spartacus. It's always a cool card to play. Uh, we are not yet so hard pressed to risk it, but on the other hand, it can give us some advantage. Hmm. On one hand, not such a bad roll on the other could probably be a little better. Still, uh, yeah, we have some good options of, of attack. Uh, yes, uh, where should we use it? Not an easy task from, from what you can see. We have uh, one unit which can be of any type. And one, good. I think we need to focus here, definitely and attack here. That's something which is a no-brainer. And here we can soften up. So I'm putting die in a way that I would like to use it. Actually playing I am Spartacus will also give us some more options 
uh, regarding okay so the moves are first we move here and we'll start the attack so we'll start with those guys here three die in a range you take Spartacus nothing and we'll start the attacks here this auxilia could potentially move here they don't need to stand there yeah they will move here and they will attack with a four die against those exposed Spartan units. That's a hit. So now the Persians are counter counter-attacking. Now this auxiliar will attack here with a four die. That was a lucky roll. That was a very, very lucky roll. Three hit. A leader check on two die. Nothing. And the battle back with a regular four die from here to here. That's two hits and the flag will ignore the flag. So those guys are dead and those guys are dead. Mm -hmm. It started so nicely, but it's not anymore. Now the leader attacks here, four die. And that's an overkill. Okay, now let me put another banner here. And let us roll to see if he survives. He survives and he escapes here. So this is the situation. A huge battle due to the I'm Spartacus on the left Persian wing. Now, as for the reshuffling, we are not only reshuffling the discard pile, but also all those cards which are face down on the CDG solo system. So we reshuffle all of them. Of course, I am Spartacus too. Uh, this is pretty good because it allows you some of the cards which were used uh, to come back uh, to your hand. And I think this is a good mechanism uh, for the reshuffling. Now, let us draw cards, by which I mean putting them here, of course. So, this is 2-2. Two, two. The battle is pretty close. The Greeks have limited options. I'm really afraid for them, but let's see. Okay, a hard situation for Greeks. Let's see what they can do. A, B. A, B are hidden, so let me see what we have here. Two on the left, not bad, but I would prefer something strong here. For in center, bad. Now the question is whether we would like to die with a glory. I believe we need to use those two on the left. There is no other choice. We'll go with those guys here to attack those poor lads. And we need some backup in case they would try to cut us from from the rear. Mm -hmm. They're not good options because there's so many of those horses here now. But you know, horses can go behind here. So maybe. And this is not to the left. Okay, that, uh, that ends the story. So we'll just jump with those guys here. Here. Attack here for die. Last man standing. Let's see. Oof, overkill. Both of them dead. And another point for Spartans. Now, to be quite honest, there is nothing stopping us from moving further. On on the other hand, it will be really difficult. And we can see now uh, to cut us completely. So maybe now we will not move further. We'll stay here. That's a good place for us Persians. Uh, let's not be too, too far to the front. So it's still it's still Greg's for winning, although their position on the Spartan uh, flank is pretty poor. What Persians will do? 
they have a pretty good choice a b and c line command okay the question is whether they would like to finish here or try to do something here but the leader the leader is, is over here i think the persians will go for a kill here so we play leadership and a section this will be both guys both guys both guys and do I want somebody else? Yes, both guys. And this is like that. This goes here. This goes here. This goes here. And those guys goes here. And we'll be attacking. We need to attack to win the game. Four die from here to here. Two hits and we should probably take the flag. Yes, we should probably take the flag as Greeks. Now we roll four die from here to here. These are two hits and no possibility to escape two hits because only one flag can be ignored. And the auxiliar battle box with three versus for medium infantry troops. A good roll because two of them are dead and now we have of course the leader on the horse three die versus this oh that's a debacle which can change the fate of a game three blue on the attack here okay three die back oh my goodness guys you are now witnessing the turning moment of Plataea battle. It was not so far reported by the historians. It was lost during the ages which followed the battle, but that's what happened. The brave Persian cavalrymen under the leadership of one of the leaders, actually Timageides, attacked, supported, but weakened Auxilia, hoped to do momentum advance, move one hex here and kill also those guys and be very close to victory. Instead, they got killed in the process. And what happened to the leader? He survived. He survived. The clever play of those guys back here allowed them to survive. The Athenians just scored the first victory point and brought, brought the alliance within one point of victory such a dramatic situation and we fought with it with everything for the greeks okay uh, let's see what the greeks will do they have now some points to get and they only need one now let me just move those points here so you can see them you can see one, two, three, four Greek points, one, two, two Persian. CDE, CDE is here, here or here. Light troops and two in the center. Hmm. So we can move heavy, that means any because we don't have heavy. We can move two in the center, which is not very sexy, those two light units. And we can use light units, just just like this. It might not be a stupid idea to just move light units. Because that will allow us... On the other hand, yeah, we play to win. So, maybe a risk worth taking of bringing, you know, one attack with those heavy units card and trying to smash the opponent. Okay, let us play the light. So five light units, uh, we will bring them here and here. So we support this leader, these are two units. This will be fighting, this will be fighting. Uh -huh. uh, we actually can go here. Yeah. No, let's stay. Let's stay. One, two, three, four, 
and that probably should come here. First of all, <clears throat> a range fire, one die here, flag, so we go to hexes back. I will attack two units here, evade. Okay, no evade, they fight. I think we will fight. <laughs> that was a good decision now, they battle back. Flag, which is ignored. Now, those two guys fire here. Nothing. And now the big roll, three guys against, three die against. Oh my goodness, it's like a roll from the before, from the previous turn, where those, those poor horsemen were not able to kill those guys. Now they are not able to do anything to those. Battle back for And they are dead. My goodness, such an interesting play. Yeah, I'm a little making this interesting, but yeah, anyhow, pretty, pretty, pretty fun again. Let's see what will happen next. Okay, let's see. Time for the Persians to do something. And they can do a lot. ABC, line command, rally, and counterattack. And uh, just to remind you, there was a light troop card here. Yeah. So one of those three cards we can play. Rally, rally is not giving us too much. Light troops are not giving us too much, although we can make some difference. Mm -hmm. Line command. Also, it's not a very good card for us at this moment in time. We'll play a counterattack, so we move five light troops. How do we move them? I believe I would like those, those auxilia to be here. Mm -hmm. This would be one move. Second move will be here. Oh no, we'll be firing here. Two die. Third move will be attack here. Fourth move would be moving here, and the fifth is moving here. Let's do the attacks now. Two die here. Nope. Two die here. Ah, they do not hit on the swords. Battle back four. One hit, two hit, and flag. It's a little desperate attack, but it could kill those guys. Now, we need to roll with this auxilia. Three. And this is a double hit. No, it's one. One, one, one. Only one hit. Because it's not blue. Uh, leader check, which could die. Nothing, and then the battle back. One hit and one flag can be ignored, the other not, so and uh, two more dead. Wow. Not exactly what was expected by the Persians. Bloody fast. But what would Greeks do? They have pretty depleted forces. A B. So free in center, not good. Something better please. Oh, one, one, one. One of the most flexible cards and the one which we would like to definitely play. So, the unit uh, here. Here we would attack with this unit. Or even better, we'll go with this. Yes, we'll go with this forward. We will be attacking here. In the center. Not good choices. I think we will attack here and they will attack here. No, let's not take chances. Those guys attack and those guys attack. So, one, two, three. First of all, they attack here. 
Maybe that will be end of the game. Yes, they killed another unit of medium infantry. And that way, the Athenians turned tide of the battle. This battle could end differently, provided this hero heroic charge of the horses would end differently, but it didn't. Here, the Spartans managed to survive pretty long the onslaught of Persians after their initial break. And uh, the history repeated. One, two, three, four, five. Five to three to, to, the, to the Greeks. So guys, this is how the uh, card-driven game solo system of GMT works. I hope that you like it. It's pretty fast uh, game and pretty well implemented system. Uh, as you have seen, I had to make the decisions what the best cards are. Sometimes I didn't have a decision because there was only one card which I could use. All in all, uh, I really like how it plays. I really like the flavor. I really like also how intuitive it is. You know, guys, choosing the good card out of one, two, or sometimes three, it's not a big deal. Yeah, it, it, it's pretty quick, pretty straightforward. And as you can see, even if something the decisions are suboptimal, you never can be sure what the other side will play. This roll of a die helps you to choose, to, to, to narrow the choices you can have with the cards to the ones you were not expecting. So on one hand, you know a little what the opponent can do because you see like three, four cards, sometimes one, sometimes two. And sometimes you don't see anything or you see something which you are scared of, but rarely, rarely. So I think, uh, Keeping the, the important uh, information, what opponent can play and what he is allowed to play, it's, it's really well, well done here. And of course, Command Scholar Sanchez proved to be a fantastic game as always. I had a lot of fun uh, playing this game, really fast and furious and, and pretty, pretty bloody. Uh, the history repeated. We have some dramatic moments like with this cavalry charge here. So, 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 hope you also like it. Uh, by the way, the CDG solo system is also implemented in the newest Vassal module. And uh, I'm thinking about also doing the material uh, about that. So each and every of you can also test and try it and, and see how it goes there. So that's all from me today. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if, if you do, please, please feel free to give a thumbs up. Uh, you can also subscribe to this channel. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, remarks, use the section below it. Thank you very much for being with me today. Thank you very much for watching and bye for today.